all right so let's begin with the third type of error that is geometric errors now we must understand that this entire technology or any other technology for that matter is totally dependent on mankind so human beings have only devised the technology and we control the technology nothing happens automatically everything is commanded by us and then only takes place so errors are bound to happen everywhere okay because and this technology is highly live in nature so definitely whenever you are working on some live project or whenever you are doing something live errors will happen because human beings cannot be you know static all the time so whenever there are errors in the geometry of the imagery it is called geometric errors okay so all remote sensing imageries are subject to some of our more geometric distortions depending on the manner in which the data is acquired so yes the other lecture we saw something called like line start dropouts yes line start dropouts was what when the scanner okay is moving along the second line some pixels in the beginning of the line are missed by the sensor okay and then when you align it properly with the other imageries that are overlapping imageries you can get it so there we were trying to adjust the geometry of the imagery but because of our false calculations because of our false calibrations because of improper planning of the it is called flight planning because of the improper planning of the flight okay sometimes the imagery is not captured at the correct angle or it is not captured appropriately to be able to understand the objects properly now when that happens that is called a geometric error okay so what comes under geometric error the perspective of the sensor optics that is the angle of the sensor like i explained in the previous one also that if i want to take the picture of pune i must see that my sensor is located overhead in such a way that pune is covered properly now this is more evident in the case where you have high mountains okay so suppose if you are not taking mountains from a proper angle you will not be able to identify the peaks of the mountains yes if you take it overhead the mountain then what will happen you can only see them as points but if you want to know the landforms of the mountains the angle should be such that the, a little side view is also covered and the peaks are also covered why because you will be able to understand that if this is a mountain and the landforms associated with this are because of it being a mountainous area if you cover it only from the top the mountains will look like points it you will not be able to see the rest of the associated landforms with it so it is the perspective that is the angle at which the sensor is placed then the motion of the scanning system now i want to tell you that there are three types of scanning systems available in the technology of remote sensing one is push broom scanner one is whisk broom scanner and one is side looking scanner now i'm sure that some of you might know what these scanners i'm talking about would somebody like to put light on them what is a scanner in the first place anyone okay so sensor captures reflectance but sensor is attached to a scanner and scanner is attached to the satellite okay so it is the scanner which moves and takes the imagery of the earth so scanner will move in three ways one is push broom push broom means what it will cover a larger line at the same time second is whisk broom it will cover pixel by pixel and third is side looking so when it is moving it will cover the pixels on the each side that is both the sides left side pixel and right side pixel so why is the motion of the scanning system important because see whenever an area is covered it will not be covered only by one pixel or one imagery even a small island like mumbai or even a 
small patch of mumbai cannot be covered entirely in one pixel or in one imagery okay so we have to have what overlapping imagery is to be able to take the scene of the entire land why because every camera every sensor has a limitation on the area it can capture for example when you are taking a photograph from a mobile can you take photograph of the of a large group together no what do you do either you go very behind you go very far from the group and if you are going very far the photos will not be clear also and if you want and if you are very near the entire group will not be covered so every camera or every sensor has a limited field of view that is a limited area which it can cover in one time all right so but if you want an a larger area to be covered then you have to rely on overlapping imageries overlapping because as the as the scanner moves on one line immediately it will change the path and it will go to the adjacent area now when it is going to the adjacent area it will definitely overlap the earlier area so whenever we have many image uh, a bigger area to study we either have something called as a stereo pair which is in perspective of our aerial photograph wherein we have overlapping uh, vertical photographs or oblique photographs or in the case of satellite imageries also you have a stereo pair where you have overlapping satellite imageries okay when you are having overlapping satellite imageries the areas which have to be removed and areas which do not overlap can be joined and made a larger area yes so that that is why motion of the scanning system is important to be understood here because like how you make jigsaw puzzle you should know which part of the puzzle fits where you cannot just place the first and the 50th part together it has to be 1 2 3 4 only it cannot be 1 6 8 10 or 11 yes so just like a jigsaw puzzle you have to arrange the images properly hence you should know how the scanner has moved the third is the motion and instability of the platform now for example a satellite will always be quite uniform and stationary because it is something which is in space and in space the disturbances are not many but if you are taking an aerial photograph from the aeroplane a camera attached to aeroplane and if there has been even little disturbance a little turbulence your plane will vibrate and when the plane vibrates that means there is a disturbance in the camera's angle and camera's position everything and what will happen the photograph will be blurred it will not be visible so it has to be seen that the platform from which you are capturing the remotely sensed data has to be very stable it cannot be very fast in motion it cannot be very slow also because if it is very fast the images will not be col collected properly they will be collected very blurred because if a camera is moved have you ever tried taking a movie from a moving car what will happen your photo will not turn out correct they will have a different angle and if it is very slow then what will happen it will take a long time to capture the area plus it will capture several photos of the same area which are not even required so the motion of the the speed and the stability of the platform is also to be borne in mind then the next is the platform altitude attitude and velocity now like i said the speed is important here which is velocity the altitude the height from which the photograph or the imagery is taken why because if it is very high the field of view that is the area that it will cover will be large but in that case what will happen your resolution will be poor because if the every camera also has a maximum and a minimum resolution if you try to capture objects very far and if it does not have that capacity what will happen you will not be able to identify anything in the image or anything in the photograph so it is important to know the altitude you, you have to plan all these things so that the output is perfect yes then the terrain relief 
terrain relief means what topography of the area so if it is a very mountainous area or whether it is a very uh, low lying area or if it is a mix now suppose you are covering an area which has a hill in between yes and you set an altitude of uh, the say if you are taking the photograph from a plane you set an altitude of say 400 meters now but the hill is 600 meters high what will you do will you suddenly shift the plane you will ask the plane to go above the hill and take the imagery or photograph no you have to have a uniform altitude maybe at 650 meters from which it will be able to cover the entire area from the same height so that your analysis becomes better and everything fits in the same imagery there is no distortion in the imagery also and the last is the curvature and rotation of the earth so while taking it from satellite imageries we have to keep in mind that the earth is not a flat surface yes earth is not a stable body it rotates it revolves okay and it is round in shape so your angles of the cameras or the satellite imagery ka sensor has to be such that it is keeping in mind the movement of the earth the movement the shape of the earth and what it has to also keep in mind the topography so though everything on the earth is down because of gravitational pull etc but you cannot treat it as a flat object in the space that is why we cover very very small small pixels and land parcels so that you know the shape of the earth does not come in between also the earth moves okay it rotates very slowly though it rotates it revolves also so we have to be very sure that all the movements of the earth are not hampering the imagery or the photograph that we are trying to capture so that the imagery comes out proper now even after keeping so many things in mind even after planning the flight there are two types of geometric errors the first one is systematic error and the second is unsystematic errors the first that is systematic error these errors can be corrected through the analysis of system characteristics that is again like we saw in the first lecture of errors that there are two types one is systematic errors so there is a problem in your planning there is a problem in the with the satellite there's a problem with the camera maybe there's a problem with the angle or something like that due to which the imagery has not come out well or the second could be unsystematic say maybe uh, you you did not know that there could be some maybe a thunderstorm has come maybe a sandstorm has come maybe uh, you could not understand the device that could cause unsystematic errors so basically the final output will be that there will be some problem in the angle or the geometry due to which you're not even able to identify the objects why is this geometry so important in aerial photographs or in satellite imagery is because suppose if there is an imagery having eiffel tower okay it is highly possible it is 110 percent possible that you are able to measure the height of Eiffel Tower with the help of a 2D imagery like this. Okay, that is with the help of the resolution, scale and the analysis of a principal point exactly in an aerial photograph and in a satellite imagery it could be with the help of algorithms. But you can definitely find out the height of the objects. Now suppose if the angle is not proper, okay, your calculations will go wrong, all your uh, interpretations will go wrong and finally we will result in having miscalculated interpretations due to which whatever answers you will give whatever outputs you will give will not be relied upon so besides having proper light proper weather besides having a proper system the most important is that you should have a proper geometry while capturing the imageries now how do you correct such geometrical errors so there is something called as ortho rectification now what is ortho rectification there is something called as the nadir angle now what is a nadir angle let me explain to you what is a nadir point first that i can explain when i'm making the uh, diagram in front of you so that it becomes easily 
understandable so for example this is the earth's surface okay and here is my camera or in case of aerial photograph or camera in case of satellite imagery a sensor now so your sensor or camera will have something called as a field of view what is a field of view the extent which it can capture in one time okay so it can capture this area in one time but there will be something called as the point which is just perpendicular to the camera yes this point is called nadir point this point is called nadir point after the famous balloonist nadir who gave all this information and knowledge about aerial photography and photogrammetry etc so this nadir if it is corrected okay and we know the fov that is the field of view of the area we will know that how much of the area it is covering and that is called ortho rectification that is we are trying to correct the angle or the suppose sometimes what happens even in a printer you will find that you have created a word document but while printing it has come teda meda on the page why why it has come tilted on the page because the paper was not loaded correctly in the printer when it is not loaded correctly in the printer the printer is taking the paper but it is it will print as per its geometry now if the paper is not uploaded correctly it is not its mistake if it is little tilted it will print if it is very tilted then the paper will get stuck in the printer itself so in the ortho rectification what happens is if it is a little tilted okay that is if the image has come out little tilted you can correct it by understanding which could have been the real center point that there, there is a way of doing that which is called principal point analysis wherein if this is your imagery or satellite photograph it is always in a square shape okay you find out the diagonals of the square like this and the point at which it meets okay will be called the principal point or the nadir point now if it is tilted printed tilted on a page okay then what will you do you will first draw the square proper square around the image okay or you can take a little inner portion of the imagery because that will be in the correct place and then you can draw the diagonals and then you can come out with the principal point and then you we can do the other calculations and the analysis so now this was done manually like this but now you can do it automatically in the software then you just have to use a command and it will be ortho rectified so i hope you have understood what is field of view and what is nadir point here okay now ortho rectified imageries Now there is a statement here which says ortho rectified images are easier to register and scrutinize because they are not geometrically distorted. Means what? Now suppose you know that GIS or remote sensing is always done in layers. So if you have four objects, one is water body, one is infrastructure, one is vegetation, and one is built up. Okay, four layers. you will have this information segregated in four different layers in the imagery or in the software now suppose there are four people who are working on the imagery each one of us is digitizing or is converting the raster to vector so what is important here is to have geo referencing done properly if your geo referencing is not proper when you try to combine the four layers you will not be able to superimpose them properly that is the
feel correct. Okay. That has to be avoided. Errors during have to be in this is so important of mosaic. What is mosaic? Mosaic is having several images or several pictures of the same area. Suppose if there is Maharashtra. Okay, Maharashtra is a big state. It cannot be never be covered in one single A4 size paper or in one single imagery. That will be like a map which you cannot even zoom or read properly. Okay. So what will happen? We will have several photos and imageries of the state which we will and we can come up with a final map of Maharashtra. Computer. What happens you have to do? georeferencing i will tell i will even demonstrate what is georeferencing okay so if that is to be done properly if the geometry is incorrect it is difficult because then the puzzle suppose so, uh, you have seen a puzzle if the puzzle is not cut properly can you join the puzzle no so similarly if the geometry of even one single image is not correct the entire state cannot be analyzed or georeferenced so we have to see that all the imageries are geometrically rectified ortho rectification simply means geometric rectification now rectification means there is little error in rectifying the error now there is something called as geometric correction now geometric correction is the use of standard pixel size and coordinates permit suitable layering of images from different sensors and map into gis now like i said See, there are many softwares that working in the field of GIS. I would work on ArcGIS, somebody would work on QGIS, some will work on Geomatic, some will work on MapInfo, some will work in Grass, some, as a, different people will work on different software. And then finally, we will want to combine it because we want to submit it for some project or something. Now in this what happens is, you may georefer it in a different way. I may do it in a different way. You may have done it, done the rectif different way. I will do it in a different way. But the final output has to merge. So when you want to merge it together, each pixel has to be corrected. Each angle has to be corrected in every software at the same level. Because the final layer, we will do the ortho rectification. That is, we will only rectify. We cannot correct each and everything when we're working with several layers. Any land parcel, that is any smallest part of land, can be up into 15 layers also. Okay. Now if I want to merge all the 10 to 15 layers, it is difficult for me to do the correction in every layer and do it. So what I will do is I will just merge all the layers and in the end I will rectify. Now in geometry correction, what do we do? Pixel by pixel. Okay, so on that layer, the correction is pixel by pixel on the topographic image, every resulting on the top of above. If the image appears, it is in the orthographic projection. Now, in this, what happens is each pixel, now I have done it on my own. So, uh, we had a raster data and we opened it in Erdas Imagine. And wherever there was an error or wherever we could not understand what pixel it was, we had a topo sheet with us. Okay, now from the topo sheet of the same area, we tried to understand the object and we rectified the area pixel by pixel. It is just like removing random bad pixels or removing dark pixels. So you are trying to associate it, but you are also doing kind of ground through thing at the same time. But you're not going to the ground, you are only looking in the topo sheet because topo sheet is considered to be a very detailed level map of every area so if that spot is seen as a settlement i give that pixel value if the pixel is seen as a water body i give that value. i just don't rely on what is seen in the wrong pixels but i also make sure the area is seen as water body everywhere yes so that comes under geometric correction now again geometric rect rectification is also one way of reducing geometric error that is the process by which the geometry of an image is made planimetric now what do you mean by plan matric or planimetric also it is called now in this what happens is uh, whenever you have satellite imageries 
they have 3D data, 3D data also. Whenever you have an aerial photograph, it will show 3D objects, 3D objects only. So here, what you are trying to do is you are trying to make a 3D map into a 2D map. That is, you're making it a plane map, a planimetric map, which can be printed in any book. Now, when you're doing that, you make sure that the information is not lost in the map. You can still identify the object as a mountain. You can still identify the area as a deep valley. But in this, what you do, we do not rely on the software. We make convert the map to a map with this input. Or even if it is as an image, can be understood well by the reader. In this, it is seen that none of the pixels are lost. They are not elevated also. That is, their pixel values don't change. Neither do they increase nor do they decrease. And the image remains what it is. The information remains what it is. And this is therefore also called as map rectification. Because now you are trying to convert a satellite imagery or an aerial photograph into a readable map. Okay, a map is very different from an image or a photograph because a map has map components like title, the title, the legend, the key, the north arrow, the surrounding areas. Okay, it also has grid and it is only printed on, on a very small size paper, on a limited size of paper or displayed on a limited size screen. So you cannot say that oh, I'm, I'm going to join five pages and make a map. No, the entire area has to be covered in one page only so that the reader is able to read the map properly. Therefore, it is also called map rectification. Now comes georeferencing. So I would like, I don't know how many of you know georeferencing, what it is and how it is to be done. But I'm going to just show a small example of georeferencing. And I'm using here, QGIS software that is because it is an open source software and I'm going to teach the most basic way of doing it but something which can be done by anyone and any system. So before uh, till the time QGIS opens let me download one imagery from the internet. So I will take a map of since I am I'm assuming that you are seeing this process for the first time or I'm teaching the basics. That is why I'm going to go with a very basic map. So I'm going to go with a map of India with latitude and longitude which is available on the internet. I go to images. I click on more. Uh, I, I click on tools and I go to size and I click on large. Now why am I doing this? Because I'm trying to take an image which does not get easily pixelated so that if I want to digitize it, if I want to convert it to vector data, I can do that easily. So this is one image of India. Actually, this is not an imminent image. It is not an imagery. It is just an image. That is just a photograph. So I click on it. This is not available. Now this happens. So you have to keep looking for a problem and save because unless you are able to save it in JPEG or in PDF or in JPG format, you cannot run the analysis or you cannot do anything on it in the GIS software. So let me see if I can save this one. So I'm creating a folder and I'm going to save it. Yes, now I click on a new project. I go to raster, georeferencer. I open a raster image. And I browse my folder. And I open it. 
Now in this imagery, I have already downloaded it with lat long latitude and longitude. So I need not rely on Google. Suppose you download an imagery which does not have latitude and longitude, you can easily go to Google Maps. Type the area you're looking for. Okay. So this is Alibag. Yes. You may have a similar map that you want to georefer. You can go to the point you're looking for georeferencing. Any point, either an either a place in the map or the corner of the map. Right click and you get the lat long here. Similarly, you can take four coordinates and you can do the rest of the process as I will be showing you. Now here, since I have, I already have them, I'm going to be starting with the available data only. So this I'm teaching is georeferencing. Okay, if you follow the same steps appropriately for all the layers of India, you will be able to superimpose all the layers. Okay. So I'm going to add point. I'm going to zoom it and place it here. What was the value here? Can somebody tell me what will come in east? Yes. Anybody with me? Yes, are you following? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so 70 will come in X and 30 will come in North. Okay, I added one point. Now I'll go to other point. You have to zoom as much as possible. So that you get these errors, 90 and 30 again. Now I go to the third point, which is 90 and 10. Now see, when we are working with a country or a state, it is still easy to get such maps. But suppose you are working with a village or you're working with an area in the topo sheet okay you either have to scan to get an image like this or you will have to rely on coordinates from topo sheet google or google maps or any other such place where you can get the coordinates perfectly of a place Now after doing this, I click on the start georeferencing button. Okay, I say okay, linear should be my transformation type. Resampling is nearest neighbor which I will be covering tomorrow so that you will understand it better. This is the name of my file, the georeferenced file. Okay, I don't want to do any compression. So basically all these are by default and I save the GCB points. I click on OK. Now, since I have done it almost perfectly because I had the graticule, that is the grid of the latitude longitude, along with the easy lat long, my error is very less, which you can see in the residual pixels. It is 9.7. However, it is not an acceptable value. So what do I do? I reduce the error. How do I reduce the error? So I try to reduce the error by shifting the location of the point that I have given to the other point that it is showing. So I click on move point. I select this point and I move it like this. Okay. Now this I have to do for all the four points. And once I complete all the four points, I call it a cycle. So I have to keep repeating the cycle unless I reach the acceptable limit, which is 0 
the error in all the four residual pixel cells that you see should be 0 0.05 or lesser. This is my fourth point. Now my error has already minimized a lot. Yes, 1.7, 1.14, 0 0.6 and 1.4. Now I have to repeat the cycle once again so that I get the correct error. Now just because I'm demonstrating, I'm doing it only once. I have to again press on the start referencing tab. It will be success. I close it. I close it from your and now I will open the, I will open both the photos and show you. One is non-geo-reference and one is geo-reference for you to understand the difference. So layer, add layer, add layer. Obviously it asks you because it downloaded image. A vector is, which is having point line polygon features. So I go to my folder. Now you can see that there are, there was just one file which I had saved earlier. Now there are two more files. The first that you see is points. Points means the four points that you plotted on the map and you gave the inputs of latitude and longitude and the next, the last one that you see it's showing underscore modified. Now this underscore modified is the georeference file which you have to open. But I will open both issues. So first I have opened the non-geo-reference one. And as I'm moving the cursor here, and what coordinates are able to you? Are they the correct coordinates of India? You can see here on the screen. Uh, as you can see my cursor. Are they the correct coordinates of India? 916 and minus 956. Are they correct? Participants, please interact. Ma'am, display is not working properly. Display is not working properly? No, ma'am. Ma not uh, ma'am real time Not, yes ma'am it is the correct coordinate this time your screen is stuck is it visible now no ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am is it visible okay so can you yes, tell me yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma Okay, okay. Next time, are they proper coordinates? Can you see the coordinates on the screen? Yes. Are they correct? No, ma'am. No. Why? Because we India doesn't have coordinates like this. Yes. But now when I remove this and I add the correct one, that is the georeference one. Now coordinates that you see, are they correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So this is a georeference image. However, can you see that the image has compressed a bit from between? That is because I did not minimize the error properly. Just to show you. Yes. So when you minimize the error properly, when your georeferencing is absolutely perfect, the image will be displayed correctly. It will be georeferenced. Now, for example, if I want to run anything on this, suppose I want to measure a line. Okay, I want to measure the distance between Mumbai and Delhi. 
it is giving and i will change it to kilometers it is giving me the correct answer but if the same measure i had to do on a on an image which is not georeferenced it will not give me the correct answers why because georeferencing tells the software that which part on the earth we are referring to software doesn't know this is india software does not know this is mumbai and delhi it does not even understand if suppose if i i say this is india and i give the name as china it will not be able to understand but what it understands is only calculations so it has the knowledge of gratitude that is the grid of latitude and longitude and when you have given four corners of a square it means that it is referring to that corner only that part of the gratitude and it will calculate accordingly okay hence georeferencing is very important so you can see there are many ways of doing georeferencing one is what i showed you is you can you know download such an image and if it is available or you can scan it or you can scan it and then you can take the latitude longitude of the image and put the put the lat long there and it will get georeference so suppose if you have a shape file of the area suppose if your friend has already done this method and if he has created a shape file of the area you can do it from the shape file also then you can take the lat long from the google also and do the georeferencing okay there uh, in the gis softwares now you have something called as the open street maps also which are already georeferenced and they are readily available for your use on those there are many layers also which are already present which you can change or you can use for your analysis okay so uh, here i conclude my session for the day where i have covered atmospheric errors and corrections and i have also covered geometric errors and correction georeferencing will help you to you know put things in place properly so if suppose if all of us have map of india my and if you refer to suppose one map suppose which i have geo reference you use the same coordinates as i have used and the same places where i have plotted all our maps will fall in place they will superimpose so this is one way in which you can remove the geometric error of the images thank you tipai nandan if participants having any queries or questions you can ask me today again i will post my email id in case you want to approach me in future thank you for the comments yes i will share the ppt on whatsapp dear participants very nicely dr amrita ma'am has presented and she conducted two sessions continuously and her deliberation was really resourceful i am sure you will be benefited through her lecture if you have any queries any questions you may ask here you may post in chat box or you may email to dr amrita agarwal ma'am she is very much cooperative and whatever need you may require she will definitely assist to you if you don't have any further queries shall we proceed ahead uh, towards the conclusion of the session ma'am uh, i am i have one question please ask please ma'am yes, please yes. tell me the overlap percentage of images uh, the ratio of uh, overlap okay is there now this or, uh, is there any certain ratio where we no, can uh, capture no, the image no, no. there can not be a certain ratio that is why it entirely depends upon the movement of the scanner like i said there can not be a fixed ratio however it is like 10 to 30% overlap is something which is expected always but there are images which are 50 to 75% overlapping also okay as i said again so when you are 
post planning or if you want a very less overlapping imagery you have to order the imagery in such a way that you have a very minimum overlap accordingly the person who is uh, controlling the entire plan entire mission will command the satellite and accordingly the images will be taken however 10 to 30 as i said is always there and is going to be expected more than that is also found in certain areas but that is only in rare cases and in fact i'll tell you wherever you want to like suppose you have aerial photographs okay in aerial photographs earlier we did not have the technology of uh, creating a digital elevation model so yeah. our uh, old geographers okay they used something called as a stereoscope and a stereo pair in which we had overlapping aerial photographs of the areas having 3d features it was placed in a stereo uh, scope and we had special glasses to view them so you could even you know make a 3d i mean you could visualize it 3d i think patil sir must have used it used a stereoscope and a stereo pair so in such areas more overlap is expected more overlap is demanded so that the better the overlap the better will be the view of 3d again so again whatever is your area as per your requirement you can uh, you know decide the overlap that you are looking at however in remote sensing that is in satellite imagery uh, since we are working with digital zero overlap can also give you the best of the terrain models because it is entirely depending upon the pixel value. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Ma yeah. Yes. Narendra Kumar ji, do you have any question? Uh, so, ma'am, no, can, uh, ma uh, can we consider Nadir uh, image as a 90, per 90 degree angle? Yes, it has to be that. And if it is not that, that is where we have to rectify it. Okay, so for na Nadir, it is uh, used for only 2D, 2D ortho, right? 2D image? No, 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 it is there with all the images because, see, Nadir will be present everywhere. 90 degrees can be there everywhere. No, whether it is a mountain peak or it is a deep valley or it is a flat land. One point which will be right in the center of your sensor or a camera will always be present in all the images. So Nadir will always be there irrespective of what type of area it is. Okay. Thank you, madam. Your session is really appreciated by all the participants. Thank you for the opportunity. It was sir. really resourceful. Uh, thank you for uh, giving your valuable time and enlightening the participants. Dear participants, tomorrow again we will have a session by Dr. Amrita Agarwal. And this will be the last session by Dr. Amrita Agarwal in this international workshop. Thank you. Thank you.